Hello all, thanks for tuning in. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about Lubin. Sigmund Lubin of Philadelphia and his motion picture industry here. Here's Lottie Briscoe, uh, one of his stars, dating back to about 1913. That's a three-sheet uh, poster there. And another uh, one-sheet here of a Lubin film, uh, part of a series. Um, Lubin started in the motion picture industry. Uh, 1897, here's uh, Sigmund uh, and his cameraman there, a uh, later period, probably from about 1912, uh, at a studio in Bettswood outside of Philadelphia. But Sigmund started in 1897 um, with the projectors. He was an optician making a grinding glass. He was a German by uh, trade and one of the early uh, Jewish influences in the motion picture industry. Um, uh, he was famous for copying things. So anything that Edison came out with, uh, Sigmund uh, felt uh, free reign to basically copy it. So um, here are a couple of the projectors. Um, this is the, uh, the Marvel Cineograph from uh, roughly 1907-1908. There's uh, Lubin's Marvel, and that would set you back uh, $145 at that time. It's basically a copy of a, an Edison projecting kinetoscope. And here's his last model. This is the uh, big improve model, which has the uh, double flywheels on either side uh, for extra stability. Um, and this patent was taken out in uh, 1909. And this also has the patents company uh, played on it. In 1909, all the motion picture people uh, had patents. Uh, Edison, L Lubin, Selig, um, all the pool, all the patents were pooled together to kind of give a monopoly on the uh, motion picture industry. And it worked for a while, but uh, uh, the uh, creativity of Hollywood kind of took over, and that all kind of crumbled, and it fell apart, and all the people that uh, started in the industry kind of uh, waned. So um, we'll crank these up here for you in a minute. The earliest Lubins uh, copying Edison um, had a wood body. Um, and this is the later uh, cineograph, um, 1907, all uh, cast iron. But you have the open gearing here. It turns over very easily. You have an interior shutter there. One little flywheel on this side. And you're going to be cranking a, a thousand foot reel, which is going to last you about uh, maybe 12 minutes. So it had to crank very, very easily. So this would uh, run today just as well as it did back in uh, 1907. This is the uh, last cineograph, um, again, patent 1909, came out uh, shortly thereafter. They moved the shutter to the front here. It was easier to time um, for people in the field. Uh, much heavier base. Um, as the Nickelodeons turned into theaters, more permanent houses, uh, they wanted something a little more stable. We have the two flywheels here, which is kind of a copy of a Powers. Again, Sigmund Lubin just basically copied a lot of other ideas here. Um, it had a fire shutter in the back here, which would uh, open at a proper speed, so you wouldn't burn your film or start a fire. Um, gate. And again, it uh, cranks over quite nicely. But by this time, uh, the much better projectors were being made. Uh, your Powers uh, Camographs and then the uh, Simplex um, came out in 1912, uh, and this was pretty much an antique by that time. So thank you very much for tuning in. We'll have more interesting things uh, later. Thank you.